Hello, welcome to our daily Godcast of evening prayer on this Saturday, the 18th week in Ordinary Time, the feast day today of St. Lawrence, uh, deacon in the Holy Church. Uh, we just celebrated the other day the feast of uh, Pope St. Sixtus II, who was martyred in the mid-200s in the 3rd century. And Lawrence was one of his deacons who was uh, left behind when, when Sixtus was taken off to be uh, martyred. Uh, but the Pope told him that uh, because Lawrence was saying, uh, you know, he was wanting to go with the Holy Father, the Pope said, don't worry, in three days you'll follow me. And his prophecy uh, came true. And uh, the Romans knew that Lawrence was uh, the deacon that was sort of in charge of collecting alms, collecting uh, gifts and, and funds, money uh, from the people. And uh, they demanded it from him. They said, give us the riches of the church. And he said, yes, okay, I'll do that. He, and so he went around and he collected all of the crippled, all the infirm, all the people that lived off of the alms that was given to the church, uh, people that they supported financially and uh, physically, uh, feeding them and tending to them and everything. So he collected all the people he could that were... Uh, in his words, the treasures of the church and presented them to the Romans. And of course, they didn't take too kindly to that. And they took him off. And Lawrence was f famously uh, burned on a slow fire, on a, like a gridiron, like a grill. Uh, they used the term gridiron, so he's earned the, uh, the uh, stature of patron saint of football players since he died on the gridiron <clears throat> also the patron saint of of chefs of barbecue people that do a lot of barbecuing <laughs> and uh, I've heard two versions of um, St. Lawrence's time on the gridiron on the grill being slowly burned uh, the version I, I've heard more often used was he actually told his executioners, I think I'm done on this side. You can turn me over. And then the other uh, version of what he said, and maybe he said both things to his executioners while he was being burned alive. He said, uh, go ahead and eat if you wish. I think I'm done enough. <laughs> so uh, in either case or in both cases, uh, exhibiting his attitude about being martyred for his faith. Not fearing it, not, not uh, letting the anguish of the pain he was enduring dim his humor or his spirits and mocked the Romans who were cooking him. And uh, so I, I have a very strong affinity to St. Lawrence for two reasons. Well, he's uh, a deacon, as am I. When I was baptized as a little baby, my given name was Fred Lawrence John. So uh, my father's brother, who uh, died in World War II, my Uncle Larry, Uncle Lawrence. Um, hi, Joseph. Uh, I was named after him, but of course he's got the name of this wonderful third century deacon. Now I, you know, you know how God works. Um, I had no idea growing up. I had no idea in the, most of my adult life. It wasn't until 1999 when I was uh, closing in on being 50 years old that... Uh, um, I felt the calling to the diaconate. You know, so I have two wonderful deacon um, 
patron saints. Of course, the patron saint of all deacons is Saint Stephen, uh, the first deacon and the first martyr, if you will, of the Christian church. Um, and then also my namesake, Saint Lawrence, a deacon also and a martyr. So we have um, uh, today Saint Lawrence's feast day, and uh, I always uh, think of my dad and his big brother, uh, who I never met. He died in World War II. I wasn't born till 1950, uh, but uh, uh, my dad named me. Well, after him, I'm Fred Jr. His name was Fred, uh, but. Uh, uh, my middle name, Lawrence, his brother's name. Uh, just a, a day that I celebrate every year and remember uh, remember my childhood <laughs> and, and my early life with my dad. Uh, the readings for today, and they really go hand in hand today. Well, I guess these are the readings for this feast day. This isn't just a memorial or you know a a minor it's is a major feast day uh they they have uh, special readings for today and they're they're the readings for the day no options are given but the first reading is uh, from saint paul's letter to the corinthians talking about how god loves a cheerful giver and we saw in saint lawrence that attitude of a cheerful giver giving his life cheerfully for the Lord and that's I think what Paul's really getting at when he's talking about this cheerful giver attitude that you know we the reading it's 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 a beautiful reading let me go back and and uh, share it with you not all of it but just the highlights. Uh, it begins, uh, whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will reap bountifully. So that old expression, you reap what you sow, comes from here. Uh, and then a few lines later, um, each must do as already determined without sadness or compulsion for God loves a cheerful giver. Moreover, God is able to make every grace abundant for you. The more you give, the more you receive. Okay? And the more God gives you, the more you can give away. That's you know, the beauty of the gift of grace, the gift of love that we have from our Father in Heaven, that He gives so much of it to us. We can never use it or need all of it ourselves it's meant to be given away to be shared joyfully you know and it goes on to talk about how the more joy and happiness that we give and the more that we do give the more abundantly we receive from our heavenly father so it's just a, a good attitude to adopt and to uh, to live by to to have that that grateful attitude where you are a cheerful giver because you know that what you're giving away, God's love, is there's an infinite supply. You can never run out. Never. Because God gives you so much. He gives you every ounce of his love each and every moment of each and every day. The psalm today, blessed the man who is gracious and lends to those in need. And then our gospel. This gospel we use at many funeral services, at burial services from John. And I'll read it, it's short. Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat, but if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it. Whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. 
Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. What a mouthful, huh? Beautiful. St. John's Gospel is just filled with gems like this. A grain of wheat. You know, it. there it is, just a little grain of wheat. Right? Now it either... It, it either is added to many other grains of wheat and enriched with yeast and, you know, and becomes food for many. One little grain of wheat becomes, you know, a loaf of bread, a, you know, some wonderful culinary delight. Or it falls to the ground and becomes another source for more wheat produces much and that's the way our life should be we die to ourselves we become we, we, we suffer what referred to as small or little martyrdoms every day when we die to ourselves when we decide that it's better to serve someone else to do something for someone else where we give up our own selfish thoughts and desires and live to nourish the, the betterment of someone else, you know, and that's, that's a little, the little martyrdoms that we endure, you know, in our lives. So this is, uh, you know, on the Feast of St. Lawrence, a cheerful giver, dying to yourself so that many can be fed, nourished, and brought into God's kingdom. What a beautiful way to go about our lives in the service of others, to bring other souls into union with God himself. And when we do that, we're very blessed by our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God, come to my assistance, Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. From the rising of the sun to its setting, may the name of the Lord be praised. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. May the name of the Lord be blessed both now and and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, praise be the name of the Lord. High above all nations is the Lord, above the heavens his glory. Who is like the Lord our God, who has risen on high to his throne, yet stoops from the heights to look down, to look down upon heaven and earth? From the dust he lifts up the lowly, from his misery he raises the poor. To set him in the company of princes, yes, with the princes of his people. To the childless wife he gives a home. He gladdens her heart with children. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, word of God. Surrendering the brightness of your glory, you became man so that we, may be raised from the dust to share your very being. May there be innumerable children of the church to offer homage to your name from the rising of the sun to its setting. From the rising of the sun to its setting, may the name of the Lord be praised. I shall take into my hand the saving chalice and invoke the name of the Lord. I trusted even when I said I am sorely afflicted, and when I said in my alarm no man can be trusted. How can I repay the Lord for his goodness to me? The cup of salvation I will raise, I will call on the Lord's name. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. O precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. 
Your servant, Lord, your servant am I. You have loosened my bonds. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make. I will call on the Lord's name. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Father, precious in your sight is the death of the saints, but precious above all is the love with which Christ suffered to redeem us. In this life we fill up in our own flesh what is still lacking in the sufferings of Christ. Accept this as our sacrifice of praise, and we shall even now taste the joy of the new Jerusalem. I shall take into my hand the saving chalice and invoke the name of the Lord. The Lord Jesus humbled himself and God exalted him forever. Though he was in the form of God, Jesus did not deem equality with God something to be grasped at. Rather, he emptied himself and took the form of a slave, being born in the likeness of men. He was known to be of human estate, and it was thus that he humbled himself, obediently accepting even death, death on a cross. Because of this, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name above every other name, so that at Jesus' name every knee must bend, in the heavens, on the earth, and under the earth, and every tongue proclaim to the glory of God the Father, Jesus Christ is Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus humbled himself, and God exalted him forever. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. May the God of peace, who brought up from the dead the great shepherd of the sheep by the blood of the eternal covenant, Jesus our Lord, furnish you with all that is good, that you may do his will through Jesus Christ, May he carry out in you all that is pleasing to him. To Christ be glory forever. Amen. Our hearts are filled with wonder as we contemplate your works, O Lord. Our hearts are filled with wonder as we contemplate your works, O Lord. We praise the wisdom which wrought them all as we contemplate your works, O Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Our hearts are filled with wonder as we contemplate your works, O Lord. Lord, bid me walk across the waters. Jesus reached out to take hold of Peter and said, O man of little faith, why did you falter? My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich He has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy. Promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Lord, bid me walk across the waters. Jesus reached out to take hold of Peter and said, O man of little faith, why did you falter? Christ had compassion on the hungry and performed a miracle of love for them. Mindful of this, let us pray. Show us your love, Lord. Lord, we recognize that all the favors we have received today 
come through your generosity. Do not let them return to you empty, but let them bear fruit. Show us your love, Lord. Light and salvation of all nations, protect the missionaries you have sent into the world. Enkindle in them the fire of your spirit. Show us your love, Lord. Grant that man may shape the world in keeping with human dignity and respond generously to the needs of our time. Show us your love, Lord. Healer of body and spirit, comfort the sick and be present to the dying. In your mercy visit and refresh us. Show us your love, Lord. May the faithful departed be numbered among the saints. And in your mercy, whose names are in the book of life, show us your love, Lord. Gathering our prayer and praises into one, let us offer the prayer that Christ himself taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, your Spirit made us your children, confident to call you Father. Increase your Spirit within us, and bring us to our promised inheritance. Help us to be like him in word and deed. Grant this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. A great night, everyone, a restful night, and a blessed Sunday to you all this morning. Joseph is out cold. Right, Joe? Are you sleeping? Joseph? Yep, he's out. <laughs> Lazy bum. See you later.